Hey y'all, Data Guy here. Um, and today, what I wanted to do is show you how you can use Spark and, and PySpark for ETL processes. Um, so with most data, you're going to need to extract it, you're going to need to transform it, and then you're going to need to load it somewhere. Um, and so what I'm going to do is show you exactly how to do that. Um, so we're just going to use some dummy data here. We're going to extract it from a CSV file, do some transformations, do some aggregations, data quality filtering, uh, a lot of different, you know, all the typical steps you would have in an ETL process um, before saving it uh, back as a CSV file. Obviously, you know, if you're in production, you probably save that into a database. So I'll sub that part out to and just kind of show you two different options. Um, but Without further ado, let's get into it um, and let's get started with our script. And if you're looking on how to run or set up Spark locally, check out my other videos that cover exactly that topic. Um, but what we're going to do to get started here is just create a new script called Spark ETL.py. Um, and then at the top of this script, we're going to import a few different packages. Um, so first we have Spark session. And what this is doing is just telling us, or not just telling us, it is creating a session of Spark, creating an instance of the Spark application that will be used to actually run our ETL jobs. We also have some Spark functions that we're going to be using, like call to add a new column, lit, uh, when, uh, so you know, when something happens, then do this, concatenate, um, and to date to convert things to a date format. Um, and then we're also importing uh, different types that we'll need to use for classifying data and you know saving data as certain types within uh, Spark. So struct, struct field um, for a data structure. Then we have string type, integer type, and date type um, for categorizing our data. And the input data we're using, uh, imagine this is transaction data. So we're bringing in a bucket of users, and then we're also bringing in a bucket of uh, tr user transactions. And so within our and so just first start our spark builder and i'll show you how these databases or data sets are defined so here always going to need to set a spark session builder um, we're just going to call it complex etl pipeline um, and then here under struct type so this is the schema that we're going to define for our input data so you know most of the times when you're doing an etl process you're transforming the data so it matches a given schema and so the first scheme we're going to find is a user schema which has uh, different fields here. So we have using the struct field to create uh, different fields and we're using user ID, string uh, type, all these are string types, name, email, and country, um, and then setting them all to required, which is that true here. Then we're also going to create a transaction schema. So here we're going to do a, create a similar struct type uh, to our user schema, but in this case, it's just transaction ID, user ID, amount, and purchase date. And then we link these two tables based off of the user ID. Um, so now, we are going to load our data sets. Um, so uh, Spark, read the schema, um, path to users, um, and save it as user's data frame. So wherever you're saving your user JSON, it, data again isn't really relevant here. Um, just think that it is in these structures. Uh, so user ID, name, email, country. Uh, we're just focusing on the high-level attributes of the data. Um, then we're also going to read in our transactions data frame. Um, so again, just pulling in uh, from our transaction CSV, this time uh, specifying the header. So if your data has a header, make sure you're using the header equals true flag here. Then after that, what we're going to need to do is clean and enrich the data. So here we're going to do this all in one step actually for the user data, um, where we are going to filter uh, email column. So call email contains at so making sure every single email contains an at symbol implying that it is actually an email um, then we are also going to convert any countries that have been saved as usa into united states um, so here that's what's happening with with column when that country uh, in that column is equal to or the field country is filled out as usa for a given entry uh, replace that with united states otherwise just keep it as whatever that country was uh, just we don't have any abbreviations in our backend data set and standardize on um, the United States is how we're going to save that. Then we're going to enrich transactions with date conversions and categorization. So we're going to take that raw transaction data and we're going to say, hey, with column purchase date, we're going to convert that to a date time format. So here we're reading in purchase date and then we are saving it uh, in the date time format of month, month, day, day, year, year, year. Um, and I'm just saying after the letters, I don't know why. <laughs> um, and then also for our amount category, uh, because we don't care about the granularity of you know exactly how much they spent. Um, instead, what we're gonna wanna do is say, hey, if you spend less than $20, you're a low spender. Between 20 and $100, you're a medium uh, level spender. And otherwise, you're a high uh, spending customer with us. Then we're going to join the user and the transaction data. So here, we'll 
bring it and do another step here. So remember, you have to create a new data frame every time you want to add or, or merge two data frames within the PySpark. So here, transactions a rich data frame, we are going to join user ID um, and select the transaction ID, user ID, all, all this information um, from these two data sets. So we're joining the transactions data frame and the user's data frame. Um, and then we're also going to do some further aggregation. So now that we've got our collated kind of uh, combined data set, here we are going to create a new data set called sales by country data frame, where we're going to take that transactions in rich data frame, which is the joined uh, uh, user and transaction data frames, and we're going to group them by country. Um, so here, group by country. Um, so every you know, the U.S. is bucketed together. Everyone from Argentina is bucketed together, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and then we are going to sum the amount in each country. So this sum function, because we're doing it after a group by, it's going to sum up the total sales for each country, um, and then rename that column as sum amount um, and call it total sales. So this data frame resulting will just be a list of the different countries uh, that are contained within this original data set. Uh, and the total amount of sales for each of those individual countries. Then we can save that data again um, as a data frame if we want. So here, uh, writing this actually as a parquet file, so just defining a path as a parquet, or you could also write it in this way um, where you're saying format CSV, save path to output sales by country. Um, so that's one way. And now I wanna kind of show you a couple substitutions here based on you know what you want to be doing with your data um, and also, Remember, at the end of every data set, toss and spark stop, um, just so you stop your spark session, you don't just have it running constantly as it goes process in your, in your machine. Now, if you wanted to create an external table within a SQL database using Spark, instead of saving it as a CSV or a Parquet file, you can use the Spark SQL query, create external table if it doesn't exist, um, with the look so transaction enriched by pointing it to the uh, output paths of these transaction enriched um, and sales by country uh, CSV and Parquet files. So this next step kind of allows you to take, hey, from the CSV or Parquet file where you saved it, um, now save this or create an external table within a database that pulls this data from that external location and then saves it. And this is just kind of one way of connecting, of creating a Spark SQL. I also want to show you, you know, how you would just directly connect to a database. So let's say I'm just using my local Postgres database, you know, JDBC Postgres SQL at localhost 5432. Um, just giving it, you know, users, Postgres, Postgres, um, just like any you know, kind of just st started up Postgres database. Um, and then what you can do is use the JDBC method to write that data to a new table directly from Spark instead of needing to use this write file and then save it uh, in a database. You can also just write directly um, with this transaction rich data frame using the JDBC connection um, and writing it directly into that backend database. Um, and similarly, you, know, you can do the same for sales by country uh, if you'd rather save your data that way. Um, and most of the time you'll want to because you won't want to save it in Spark locally and then have to read it out and you're just wasting processing power. Um, then what we're going to want to do is, so let's say, all right, we also need to join this to an existing data, data frame. Um, you know, typically you're, you're not going to be <laughs> doing this once. You're going to have a rep repeatable process of joining that data. Um, so you can you know, constantly update an existing data, frame, data set. Um, so here what we'll do is let's say we read the existing data frame from the Spark server. So here existing uh, data set, and then we are going to read in that newly written transactions data frame. And you could also just use your existing transactions data frame that you used initially. Uh, but it's, again, I want to show you the kind of optionality that comes along with this. Um, and then what we're going to do is perform a join operation. So here, join data frame. Uh, and here, all we're doing is just joining our existing data set data frame that we're pulling in from the database uh, with the uh, with our transaction rich data frame. Um, and here we're just using common column, but what you'd want to sub this out as is our user ID column um, and use that to uh, federate your data across two so that you don't have duplicate user IDs um, and you have this kind of common column across those two data sets of a unique identifier that then keys into a uh, several other pieces of information. Then after you're done with that, so you join the tables within Spark, PySpark, you then just save them right back into that join results table or into your existing data set table. So, you know, if you want to just save it back over right um, data set. And then additionally, if you just want to append, um, you also have that option. So 
you can do uh, mode equals a pen, and this will allow you to write uh, this data as an extension on that existing data frame. So you don't necessarily need to read out the data frame and then join it within PySpark. You can also use a pen, but this just kind of gives you a pen will it's like lazy, so it's not going to necessarily perfectly align your data. Um, so I personally like to bring in the data frame to Spark so I can specifically define, hey, this is that user ID column that I want to join them on. Um, and that's all I have for your day. So I hope you learned something here. I hope you found this helpful for, you know, if you're trying to uh, do ETL workloads with Spark. Um, and above all else, I hope you have a great rest of your day. Data guy out.